Okay, welcome everybody. Today I am really delighted and excited to have another one of my food and spirit colleagues on the show. So today I would love to welcome Heather Fisher-Page from Integra Holistic Wellness. Uh, Heather is somebody who has many strings to her bow, so I love to talk to these people to hear all the different things that they do. So Heather is a nutritionist. She's also a human design practitioner, and she is a healer overall is probably the best word, a healer and an intuitive um, so Heather has developed a program called Integra, the Integra Wellness Method to help others through their healing journey. And I'm sure that she's going to um, let us know that this is partly because she's had a pretty big healing journey herself. So we will talk about that too. So um, really interesting to delve into why people uh, design and develop programs to help others that um, they know have helped them and, you know, what, what better reason is there? So uh, welcome, Heather. Thank you so Thank much you. for your time today. Um, I would love for you to, yeah, just start us off with a bit about yourself and how you got to be where you are now doing what you're doing. That would be wonderful. Sure, sure. And thank you for having me on here today. Well, you know, it's actually been very much a lifelong journey for me. Um, I had health issues as a child um, and they, you know, antibiotic use. Um, my dad was a smoker and um, I think a lot of the, you know, kids from the seventies, you know, there, there wasn't the um, awareness around certain things uh, that would, you know, uh, what smoking caused, you know, ear infections, my ear infections all the time. So that took me into antibiotics and then I became allergic to antibiotics and, um, and then, you know, gut health. And then we have our own emotional traumas and things like that, that affect us, you know, things from when I was a child. And so, uh, I always had issues and, um, as I look back also, I think I was probably celiac from the beginning. And um, as I looked back at the underlying causes uh, of celiac, you know, the underlying symptoms of celiac, you know, uh, poor digestion, you know, I had horrible teeth as a kid, you know, constant and, and my mom didn't allow a lot of sugar, you know, and it was the seventies. You didn't eat sugar, like the way people are eating sugar now. Um, but my mom, uh, had a healthier, uh, you know, way of feeding us. Um, but she also got caught up in the diet culture of the time. So, but I had these issues and I had, um, you know, horrible periods as a, a teenager to the point where even codeine wouldn't hit them. And so, you know, I was in such pain and figuring out, you know, as I started uh, working on things, you know, as in, in my twenties, I remember going to a herb shop and he said, maybe you're allergic to wheat and dairy. And I'm like, what, you know, cause so that was like early nineties, like early nineties when people weren't really talking about gluten or wheat or anything. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so, and he gave me some slippery elm and something else and things didn't resolve, but I also didn't take to heart the wheat and dairy, you know, uh, at that point, but anyway, you know, just really trying to figure out why I was having issues and, um, trying different dietary regimens to see what will work. And, um, in my twenties, somebody said, why, you know, why don't you try it again? You know, I had been vegetarian. Why don't you try, you know, really just cutting out all your grains and, you know, and adding in some fish and, and stuff like that. And I, and I noticed that my body started feeling better, but didn't make the total connection. Um, and within that time I was, you know, delving into other modalities, getting energy healings and seeing some shifts with that. But, um, you know, long story short, I had children 
and um, in my late 30s, early 40s, um, went totally uh, gluten free um, after I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. And so that was, I had been uh, gluten free for probably a year, but um, I remember uh, my ex-husband going, do you think you have that chronic fatigue thing? And I'm like, I don't know. And so I looked it up. I had 19 of the 20 symptoms. And so I went and saw, um, a chiropractor. Um, and so I started doing work with him and that's when it kind of shifted me into my, uh, doing a nutrition program. Um, I had, it hadn't been like, I hadn't studied it. I had books and books of stuff. It just wasn't finding the right thing, you know, for my body. So, um, I was integrating, you know, energy healings at that time, as well as doing that work and, you know, shifting through a lot of stuff and, um, ended up in 2013 with my functional nutritional therapy practitioner certification and, uh, started doing that full time. And, uh, really just teaching classes, really enjoying doing all of that. Um, and, uh, wanting more. So that's when, uh, food and spirit came to me. And, um, cause I knew I, you know, I had this background and all these other modalities that I'd been studying and, you know, kind of, uh, dipping my toes in and I wanted something that where it would integrate, you know, by mind, body, spirit, soul. And, uh, finding the work with, uh, Deanna, Dr. Deanna Minnick was incredible. And, um, and really looking at things and going, yeah, we do need to eat colorful, colorful foods. And we do need to really look at these different systems of health and, um, how we can integrate all that together. So, um, I added that in. And then over the years, I, um, I studied astrology just on my own um, for, gosh, years and years and years, never doing people's charts or anything like that, but really for my own uh, growth yep. and um, found human design. And when I found human design, it was, it was like my soul finally really, you know, connecting to something and being able to have these levels with the astrology, as well as one of my favorite books, I'm sure you know it, the Jan Spiller um, book. Uh, it's on the nodes. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That book kind of got, uh, what, that was recommended by Deanna also. Um, really, oh. it kind of set me on the path. And then I found, um human design, um, at that same time. And it really was that piece that, uh, just kind of pulled me into really understanding myself and why I would hit, you know, hit the wall and, you know, Saturn in the first didn't tell me that enough, you know, I, I, I figured out why, you know, you know, people would say, Oh, you've got obstacles with Saturn in the first, but I didn't understand how to respond to it rather than react to it. So for me, yeah, human design was a huge piece. And over the years I've added in um, hypnotherapy and then I'm finishing up my, uh, my energy healing certification. It's a, it's about a year and a half, two year program, mm -hmm. um, in energy healing using the Barbara Brennan school. Okay. Methods of the hands of light. So. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I so, have that book as well. Uh huh. Yeah. So I work with. I'm working with a uh, uh, someone who is uh, certified, who has been an energy healer for probably 20 years, and uh, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. It's been a huge shift for me. Um, definitely somebody who lived up in because of that intuitive psychic nature always kind of lived up in this area and, you know, and didn't want to be in my body. Cause why, how fun is that being in your body when you don't feel well, a, mm -hmm. and then, um, B, this is kind of more fun. And, <laughs> but for me, the energy healing classes have actually grounded me into my body. 
um, and really taught me how to live in it differently. So uh, mm -hmm. that's been, you know, as you know, it's all our personal journeys really can come out in our professional journeys and, you know, our life purposes a lot of times. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so what work were you doing before you um, got into the more health side of things? Was it something completely different? Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. So um, I actually in college was a vocal perform performance major oh, wow. and um, ended up with a public relations degree, stayed in the music department the whole time, ended up with a public relations degree, worked for an alternative news weekly um, for three years, uh, ended up at the classical radio station in media relations. We have a conservatory in Kansas City uh, through the University of Missouri. Mm -hmm. And I was their media relations manager uh and then and worked for a production company for a while and that was just you know not understanding my energy at that time you know uh i burn out within six months yeah you know, of working for a music production company and ended up back in grad school oh my gosh you know already burn out and then i go to grad school um but got a degree in interpersonal uh communication which i mean i use you know course, yeah in, you know it's it's so helpful for what I do. Um, so I did that. <laughs> and it's so, it's just this weird twisty road. In grad school, somebody knew that I was good with design work and, um, and gave me a job. I worked uh, creative on call for Hallmark Cards. And so I did visual design Ooh. work there. And then I um, and then I went to Sprint to do, to do visual design work. But again, those beautiful catalysts that come, um, the job was stressful. I was in this corporate environment that was not creative. And um, it was the catalyst for me to go back and get my nutrition degree because I went into a huge autoimmune flare while I was there because, I mean, I had reversed everything you know, in my early forties. And then I get this job where I'm stressed out, not doing what is what my soul's calling is. Yep. And, um, it was a wonderful catalyst. I have, you know, when people are like, Oh, did you have regrets? And I'm like, no, I have no regrets about anything I've done. You know, each piece was this beautiful step on to, um, the next phase of my life, you know, and some of them might've been a big catalyst. Some of them might've been like, oh, this is nice and flowy, which I kind of like the nice and flowy. A little of course. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. kind of living in that one a little more now. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So it, yeah, very, very twisty road. And, but you know, the big message here is you can always recreate yourself, you know? Yes. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Everything is energy and it's always changing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so just for people who might not know, can you just tell us a little bit more about chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia? You know, what, what were you experiencing? What does it involve? Oh, sure. Yeah. So um, chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia are two autoimmune diseases. There are over 200 autoimmune diseases. Um, and those are just two of them. And the symptoms that I was experiencing was, um, so it was like joint pain and inflammation. Um, I would have off and on cyclical headaches, uh, you know, uh, digestive issues, bloating, you know, just all of the things that sometimes we do take for granted. Mm. Um, but the big thing was, I remember was, um, that I would sleep for like 10 hours at night and then I'd wake up and I didn't feel refreshed or anything. And everybody wanted to blame it on having toddlers. And I was like, no, something's not right. I just, I knew something wasn't right with what was going on. And so, um, I started really diving into, okay, what are the underlying factors of chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia? 
and um, some of them were viruses, parasites, bacterial infections, as well as mercury toxicity. Um, and, uh, and then there's other factors, of course, food sensitivities and all of these things. And so when I went to my chiropractor, he did a lot of muscle testing and yeah. did find that I had mercury toxicity, which I wasn't surprised. You know, um, my mom used mercurochrome when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, it, your monk, we called it monkey blood. Mm. Um, and, um, but also I remember breaking a thermometer and so, wow. you know, and it, over the years, I found that my body is one of those bodies that has certain mutations that don't support detoxification. So my yep. body likes to hold on to things. And so um, I have, I'm, I'm very sensitive, but also I have to use certain chelation techniques that are, uh, are <laughs> more gentle for releasing so um, anyway, we, you know, doing, working on those underlying issues um, and also, yeah, really focusing on myself. And I did a lot of autoimmune issues can have um, tr uh, trauma attached to them. Mm -hmm. So doing some work around my old trauma, um, the energy work that I did, um, I did EFT with um, people as well as, you know, a little bit of hypnotherapy. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, uh, so those were really, those are the symptoms I had. Um, so, and then when I flared, um, when I was, um, at Sprint, I uh, ended up finding out that I had, um, a, uh, bacteria that a lot of RA patients had, mm -hmm. um, like a gram negative bacteria, um, working with a colleague who is amazing. And actually I'm working with her now, um, on some health stuff. So, uh, she just, yeah, she's one of those really great people who dives deeply into it all, including my genetics, because I'm just one of those people who has very complex genetics. So, yeah. Yeah. And so is this a bacteria that's in your gut? The one before? Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Yeah. With RA, it was, yeah, yeah. It came out through stool testing. She's like, oh yeah, that ties back to, you know, a lot of people who have RA may have that, you know, an over abundance of that, um, harmful bacteria. So, yeah. and so was yeah. that therefore a rheumatoid arthritis, um, diagnosis for you? No, oh. no, because, you know, when, as holistic nutritionists, that's, we're not medical nutrition therapy so we don't diagnose treat or cure so it was a sign and symptom yep. of yep. that I was experiencing some of the symptoms of RA you know fi and fibromyalgia you yeah. know tons of inflammation yeah. uh, as well as uh, digestive issues and yeah just in pain just mm. very, very painful so um, but that's, it, it's good. I, I was able to shift out of that. We, you know, checked my digestive health and everything looked good. Gut permeability was back to normal. Um, but I was noticing that I was cycling, I would cycle. And so, um, that's really when I increased the, uh, self-care modalities to, and really worked a lot more on, trauma and doing, you know, regression type therapies and yep. things like that to really look at and allow and stopped resisting, you know, what I was supposed to be doing, what my sole purpose was. And I think that was the biggest piece for me was that when that clicked and it's like, no, you're not supposed to be living for everyone else. You're supposed to live for yourself and mm -hmm. what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. And as I've done that, um, over the past year and a half, uh, things have just shifted a ton. So, um, it's yeah, very, very important. And human design told me a lot about why, you know, why were things I'm always looking for the, why the root yeah. cause, why, why is this how I am? And not everybody's lives are like mine. I mean, my, you know, it's, it's just, uh, there's so much complexity. Um, and, uh, 
So, and you and I have talked through medical astrology. I have a lot of stuff that's hidden that has to be unearthed. It shows in my chart. And so, um, but uh, everything that I have done, I feel like is, is a piece that I've learned that I now can share with others. Mm. And uh, so that's been, you know, that's the huge gift of what I have gone through. I now can uh, help others and support others. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that, that is your soul's, you know, journey in this mm-hmm. lifetime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so uh, let's go into human design then, because sure. I'm sure all those people out there going, what is this human design that she keeps talking about? And it, and it is a fascinating system. Um, yeah. that involves several different um, ways of looking at somebody. So, yeah, rather than me waffling on about the little bits that I, you know, understand and think, mm-hmm. uh, and I have done a human design reading with Heather and that was really mm-hmm. fascinating. So, um, but it's much better to get it from the horse's mouth. So please <laughs> tell us about human design. <laughs> Sure, sure. So uh, human design was created, downloaded by Ra Uruhu. And he, in 1987, um, there was a big consciousness shift. Um, We know, you know, that was around the time that the Indigo children were coming in. And um, he was given this download to use different modalities and create this program. So that would help shock people, initiate people into understanding really who they were. But he also created it for the children. So these children, these amazing, beautiful souls coming in so that the parents could have more awareness around how to guide these children. And um, so it is a conglomeration of human design as uh, human design. Human design is a conglomeration of the I Ching. So it uses the 64 uh, pieces of of the I Ching and they're called gates. And it uses the Hindu chakra system. So in 1871, it went from a seven center to a nine centered uh, being. And so it uses the nine centered chakra system. It is Jewish Kabbalah, quantum energy and mechanics, and basically astrology too, because we're using the um, same details we would use uh, for a birth chart. And so it's this amazing system that uh, comes together to give you this body graph and um, really look at five different types. There are five different types of people, but it's more complex than that. There are many levels of it, you know? And so those five different types kind of tell you how you're supposed to be in the world. There is the generator, manifesting generator, manifester, the projector and the reflector. And each one has a different strategy for how to kind of show up in the world. The generator, the two generator types are here to respond to things. So instead of trying to initiate things, they're here to respond. The manifester is here to initiate things. They have this amazing flow from um, their higher self, you know, God's source that comes through. And they're here to just kind of flow with it and go with their things. And then the projectors are here to, to be invited kind of like we respond, the generator types respond, they're here to be invited into things, but they're these amazing, once they are giving that voice, they're here to direct and lead. And then the reflectors are here kind of to um, calibrate the energy. They're here, they're 1% of the population and they're here to Mm. kind of calibrate that collective energy and reflect back what society is doing, but calibrate it 
you know, from a higher octave. So, um, yeah, it's there's these five different types and there's different ways of responding and, you know, learning through the profiles. Plus, uh, within that, uh, given in it is a an incarnation cross and and it kind of gives you a roadmap for who you're supposed to be in the world, not what you're supposed to do, but who you are, how you're supposed to show up. Um, for example, mine is the right angle cross of penetration. And um, I'm here to use intuition to wake people up. I'm here to, but always in response. I'm not supposed to be out there going, hey, you know, I just got this little psychic thing that said that, uh, you know, you need to stop eating gluten or whatever it is, you know, I'm just going to use that as an example, since we're talking nutrition. But, um, but it's when people come to me. Yep. And ask me, um, hey, I'm feeling this way. What are you getting, you know, and then using letting my intuition drop in and it's so interesting because when i allow that to happen then i'm able to voice it in a different way and in a way that they can hear it mm -hmm. and take the information in so um it's a really really cool system and as i went through it and saw uh the definition in my chart and saw how different themes, life themes went on, I was able to use that information and kind of shift the narrative around from, you know, because we know there's always light and shadow of everything and or a higher expression or a lower expression and being able to go, oh, wait, I'm in the lower expression of that. That's not a healthy place to be. How can I shift myself to the higher expression of, you know, that definition or openness and, uh, and a big piece of it is deconditioning. So when Ra did this, it, he talked a lot about the not self. Um, and I have been working with uh, one of his students and someone who worked with him um, named Karen Curry Parker. And she has quantum human design. And it is a, it is something that Ra had been wanting to do, which was switch the languaging from the I Ching. I mean, the I Ching is an ancient divination system. So the languaging and the archetypes were very, you know, ancient. It's not the consciousness that we have now. So Karen has taken it and taken the languaging and made it more ev evolutionary and more empowering. And so looking at it from that perspective has been really, really helpful. And she talks a lot about deconditioning because we, you know, we're not stuck as, as we know, you know, our astrology chart tells us, okay, this is what you came in with, but it, you can get a roadmap from that yep. information, you know, very evolutionary. Um, and in the same way, human design gives you this practical roadmap to that. So it's, it's quite interesting. And um, yeah, it was one of the pieces that I, uh, I really, really needed for my own shift, as well as um, I love sharing it with other people. And mm -hmm. I always sprinkle in astrology because there is that other layer, you know, uh, looking at it uh, from, you know, and especially in life cycles, uh, it, it can be very, very helpful to have those other layers. Um, but yeah, it's, it was a, a pretty much game changer for me. Mm. And so when people have a human design reading, mm -hmm. they um, need to know their time and place and obviously mm -hmm. date of birth. Is that right mm -hmm. as well? Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And it's best to have the exact time and date. Um, it's a little looser because we're looking at it from when things shift in the gates um, more than, uh, you know, like an astrology where we want that down to the minute yep. kind of thing. Um, we're able to have a little wiggle time, a little wiggle room in it. Um, so, uh, but 
it's best to have it because that's going to give you, you know, if you're, if the profile shifts, like the lines of the profile shift at a certain time, it's not, you're not going to get the right learning yep. tools. So it, yeah, it can be, it's best to have all that information. Mm. And um, just on the the nine chakras, can you mm-hmm. talk a bit more? So obviously most people are familiar with seven and that's mm-hmm. something that I work with extensively. So right. what are the additional two? So so in, in 1871, um, according to the Hindu Brahmin system, it was that, so you, you have your your crown chakra, which we call the head, yep. uh, the sixth chakra or the third eye chakra, we call the Ajna. Um, the throat chakra is the throat chakra, the fifth chakra. And um, then the heart at that point split into two. It split into the G center, which is basically where the soul star is or your magnetic monopole is. And it split into the heart. So you have the G center and the uh, will, ego, heart center that split into two pieces. So your G center is your identity center. The will center is the the heart center more, but really houses that ego um, and that will power type of energy. Um, And then the... uh, the solar plexus split into, yeah, the solar plexus split into the emotional solar plexus and the spleen. So those two pieces, you know, kind of that traditional Chinese medicine kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so the spleen center, you know, is around houses like your instinct, um, your intuitive abilities, um, but also fear. And then you have the emotional solar plexus that looks at that emotion, empathy, um, empathic ability type of information. And then you have your sacral and then you have your root. So those two centers, the heart and the solar plexus split at that time. Mm -hmm. So, and it just provides a little extra information um, on how it all works. And yeah, when I'm working with somebody chakra system if i'm working energy healing i still use the seven the seven percent system but when i'm looking at it from the human design perspective i do look at um those other uh centers as well because there's a lot of information there yeah absolutely so it gives you a lot more information about personality and about um Mm -hmm. journey in this lifetime Mm -hmm. really and how you're Mm -hmm. going to approach and tackle that journey Right. And everybody has the whole chart. Um, you know, it, the quantum piece of human design really is energy, you know, and um, we have definition and we have openness uh, with human design and um, we have the whole chart because we're either have it, the, the, inform, the, the energy consistent and defined in our chart, or we have it open and mutable, meaning that when somebody else comes into our energetic field, we're going to, if they have it defined, they're going to uh, give us that definition. So we're going to experience it. So that's another huge piece that I love because I just, I understand energy so well that it's just, and that's not egotistical. It's just, I do. Um, but you know what I'm saying? I don't know why I felt I had to qualify that, but anyway, <laughs> but it's just, I love it. It's just yummy to think about that, you know, how we share energy and how we exchange it and, um, and why we get conditioned because we had this openness in this chart and, you know, for the first 18 years of our lives, you know, our mother or our father had that consistent energy and it was, you know, that got defined. Oh, wait, now I have an awareness around it. Oh, that was my dad's stuff. So then we can go, oh yeah, that was my dad's. I don't have to own it anymore. I can release myself from it and (laughs) give it back to that person. So I think that's really one of those huge pieces of learning and um, going, oh, now I understand why I was that way, or I am that way, but you know, it, 
I never felt I could be that way because of this. Um, I'm going to start living authentically. So, yeah. And also why people have then the physical manifestations in their body of certain conditions, which obviously then right. you can look at the, the metaphysical anatomy and mm -hmm. understanding the underlying emotional causes, which are caused mm -hmm. by these influences from other people. Right. So, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, it's really powerful, isn't it? So when would you, um, or, you know, maybe it's a matter of when do people come and have, a human design reading like what do you find are the key triggers that make people realize that this would be a really good thing for them to do it's really interesting um i get a lot of people at their life cycles um you know i work with a lot of people uh who are getting near their chiron return mm -hmm. um or they are at their Saturn return or their Uranus opposition. So around 40 to 42, you know, that's when that's my Uranus opposition. When I looked back at it, I went, oh, that's when all of these things, when the chronic fatigue showed, you know, when it was that big shift, Uranus came in and goes, okay, let's, let's shake things up so you can shift to the next, you know, up level of things. And so a lot of people will come in at that time um, for it. And some people just kind of come or uh, they're in a little bit of crisis and they want to know, okay, what's going on? Yep. So um, I, uh, I will kind of feel into their charts and um, figure out kind of maybe where some of those conundrums are or what could be holding them back. And we can go through that and work through those things um, and uh, give them the awareness that they need around it. And so uh, it's kind of those waking up points, you mm. know, and, uh, and awarenesses that we all need, you know, and so um, yeah, I, I find people come for that type of thing. Um, I'm getting ready to do uh, the um, more intensive looking at life cycle work, um, diving deeper in because, you know, I never stop learning, it seems like. And um, so I'm excited to do some uh, deeper dives into uh, life cycle analysis um, and also um looking at near-death experiences doing oh, NDE okay. charts I'm very excited about that but really um right now I really like um a lot of times people will just come and go oh I heard about this human design thing can you tell me more and so we'll do just a foundational reading mm. but in that foundational reading as you know it really gives you a lot of basic information that you're like oh wait yeah oh that makes sense my yeah. learning style is that oh I'm gonna you know I'm gonna um, I'm going to, I'm going to flow with that instead of flowing with somebody else's, yeah. you know, I, when I found out that I was an explore spiritual, you know, visionary leader, um, I was like, really, you know, or martyr heretic in, uh, traditionally human design. I'm like, and I'm here to like experiment my whole life. Um, and I was never allowed to, when I was a kid and mm. I'm like, no wonder, no wonder I wanted to try things myself instead of somebody else doing it for me. It was just so interesting. So I think it's those little aha moments, but um, I am excited. I've been doing um, what we call soul activation readings. And so looking at it from that deeper piece of, oh, you have um, your son in the gate 57, you're here, you know, you're here to do this. And we look at it from Mercury, you know, how we communicate, but how we can also communicate um, in our businesses. And, you know, just these different pieces that kind of weave this really cool story for us to activate our life purpose. Um, so, yeah, so life purpose readings and things like that. But again, I do um, smaller readings for people who have a basic understanding of human design and understand their type and their strategy because 
we always need to go back to our type and strategy and go, oh yeah, yeah wait, I'm here to respond. Why, why aren't things flowing right now? Well, I'm trying to push things. I'm trying to initiate things instead of, you know, responding. So that's usually my first question. So, you know, you're a generator. Are you responding to things? Or are you trying to push things? Are you pushing against a divine timing? But then we can deeper, take a deeper dive into the chart and look at maybe those conundrums. What's holding me back? Oh yeah, the, do you have conditioning around having to do it all for people? Uh, do you have conditioning around, you know, fear of the future, whatever it is, you know, and really talking through those things and giving kind of a mentoring session um, yep. through that. So um, mm -hmm. I love doing that, you know, being able to kind of counsel and mentor um, people. And yeah, because I was just going to say um, that, you know, the main thing that I mean, obviously it's the most basic, but that I would talk away from my session was that whole thing about being a manifesting generator and uh -huh. yeah, not having to, to pull back from pushing, pull back from pushing, you uh -huh. know, but yeah, just, you know, um, go with the flow, as you were saying, respond, uh -huh. not, not try and um, uh -huh. manifest things that aren't, you know, being brought to me to manifest to respond to the universe always gives us stuff to respond to mm. you know constantly and uh yeah and i i just love you all your you manifesting generators because you guys get to have like all these little plates spinning and trying and sampling and you know and and experimenting and then going oh yeah okay this is the one that one piece shows up and goes oh okay yeah, yeah that's what i'm supposed to fly with okay great you other pieces go sit on the sides on the shelves and uh, I might come back to you at some point, but you know, um, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, and I think a lot of manif manifesting generators, just using you, you, you all as an example, a lot of times that energy was um, stamped down mm -hmm. and you weren't allowed to experiment and multitask. And so I think that, is a huge piece. I remember in a webinar I did, somebody said, oh my gosh, I feel seen. I feel seen. Now I can tell people it's because I'm a manifesting generator. I do get to do 10 things at once if I want, you know, yeah. Yeah. and still be able to uh, have a conversation with you, you know, about uh, dinner. So um, <laughs> just, you know, if, if you need to just move out of the energy, you know, so it's, it's good. You know, I really, I love every type because there's just so much beauty in each type um, yeah. when yeah. we're in the flow. So, yeah. And for some people manifesting generators, I guess they, yeah, it's energizing to have, you know, multiple plates spinning mm -hmm. rather yeah. than depleting as it would be for, I'm sure for some other people. Yeah. Yeah. And like me as a generator, I, I was a huge multitasker and I always wondered why I was having accidents <laughs> and, or why I was always burnt out or, you know, just, yeah, things would happen. And I'm like, oh, and when I finally figured out, I'm supposed to focus on one thing at a time, whatever lights me up, that's what I work on. Um, it was so freeing. Um, and, uh, you know, because I think society tells us as mothers, especially working mothers, oh yeah, you're supposed to be doing all these yeah, things. Yeah. And, you know, no wonder I ended up with chronic fatigue, you know, because I wasn't honoring my energy. Very true. So, um, yeah. And so it's really finding that individual individualization and, uh, you know, living authentically to who we are and what our type is mm. and our strategy. So, and is there a good book or something that people, you know, not people who want to learn how to do human design, but mm -hmm. just that tells people all about it? If somebody wanted to dive into it in more depth? Oh, yeah. Yeah. First of all, run, get your chart run. I, I always welcome DMs. Um, to my, uh, you know, to my Instagram account, cause I'll run a, a free chart for people. I don't mind doing that at all. Mm -hmm. Um, or you can go on genetic matrix yourself and run it. Um, and then, I mean, for me, I have, 
even though I studied under Karen, I love her books. Hers is Understanding Human Design is her first book. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's actually the book when I went on Amazon and, uh, you know, in 2018, and I was looking for books and uh, I guess I used my sacral response, um, but <laughs> I was like, okay, which one, you know, resonates with me and hers was like, boom, okay. Um, I got her book um, and that, and it's the red one is the, her original one. Mm-hmm. Um, she has an updated one with the quantum language, I believe coming out, or maybe it's out. Um, and then, uh, and then I have books by Chayton Parker. Um, there's one on lines, but really getting the basics is the important thing. And so understanding human design, you can get the original, excuse me, book by Ra Uruhu, uh-huh. is human design. Um, but, and then there's other ones out there, but you know, those are the books that I, I go between usually Ra's and Karen's book. Mm-hmm. Um, and then is I have Karen's to- more maybe accessible for somebody who I think is so. as a beginner. You know, yeah, yeah. I think it is um, because understanding human design, it really does. It kind of breaks it down a little better than it's not like a, it's a different language, but it's easier to digest, I think. Yeah. Um, and you know, some people may resonate more with Ra's, you know, original work, but she worked with him. She studied under him, um, for many, many years. Um, and so, uh, but yeah, I, I really like her book, um, to get started and she has so many wonderful, um, free offerings on YouTube, Mm -hmm. you know, So if you find out, oh, I'm a generator, if you go in and put Karen Curry Parker generator, you will get a great video on explaining what a generator is. And um, so, you know, and, and she, a lot of times she will integrate both traditional human design language and then the quantum language as well, Mm -hmm. which allows you to go, oh, wait, I kind of resonate more with the alchemist feel of the generator energy, which I do. I definitely am like, oh yeah, that's me. You know, I mean, I do nutrition and energy healing and, you know, hypnotherapy and human design astrology. You know, I am that alchemist who really pulls things together into this um, different kind of package, you know, for each person, bio-individual package for each person. (laughs) So um, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, uh, so it's, it's really finding what language speaks to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I definitely, that's why I always use traditional and quantum human design language, because I want the person to resonate with what, where they are in their journey. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, thank you for that. Um, uh-huh. So, um, would you like to tell us a bit more about your Integra Wellness Method, which I assume, as you've just said, does integrate all those things? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I, it's it really has been part experiential, knowledge, uh, part knowledge, part you know, just this amazing conglomeration of information. But um, when I do the wellness method, um, it is, I take a look at your mind, body, spirit, soul purpose. So we look at nutrition and not from, I mean, I do, so I do everything individual um, it, that's under the integral wellness method. Um, so I do deep dive nutrition if somebody needs it, but if we're doing the wellness method, I really give, you know, tips around, uh, nutrition. Okay. You know, if we have a clean vessel, things are going to shift a little bit better. So what can you do? Eat more colors, you know, hydrate. What kind of movement are you doing? What kind of self-care really Mm. body wise are you doing for yourself? And then, um, we look at that piece, the human design piece. Um, are you living true to who you are? Um, are you living authentically? Are you living, um, are you living and being a human being rather than a human doing? Are you, and so we look at the chart. Um, and I always find when people, when we do the chart, 
whether it's, you know, just a foundational reading or it looks at the conundrums, um, things start to come up and things come up that are ready for healing. So we'll do some hypnotherapy or what is called the emotion technique where we shift um, uh, thought forms that might be stuck in the body somewhere. Um, say it's in the heart, you're feeling like this tightness in your chest. And so we look at it and we find out what that thought form is. And then we shift that and we dissolve it. And then we um, replace it uh, with a different thought or hypnotherapy. Um, but we can work through those conundrums together and decondition pieces. And then I always find after we've shifted those thought forms that it's really good to kind of pull our energy back into our body and do a um an energy healing and this stuff is this is not in one session this, yeah, of course. this is over <laughs> this is over you know uh you know three months where we you know weave in what we need and um but you know integrating it into the body i found is so important you know it's really it's really kind of you know encapsulating um all that you're doing by using doing that energy work and balancing the chakras again um so and uh, removing any if there's any energetic blocks that are going on because sometimes if you have that little energetic block there um, it might show up in a form um, that I intuit that I can help remove and shift and, you know, and then, uh, you know, fill with, you know, amazing rose light or whatever. And so, and um, just shifting, getting our energy back into our own bodies. You know, I have a technique that I do that's a centering technique, you know, and that, um, just brings all your energy back to you and lets everybody else's go, you know, uh, who wouldn't love to have that? I mean, yeah, exactly. seriously. And who doesn't know? need that? We need it. Yeah, we all do because we are all out in these things. We're all, we're constantly 24 hours a day being, you cool. know, yeah, pulled in these directions with social media and, you know, our own lives, you know, and so getting centered is can be very helpful so that really is the wellness method um you know really looking at again the body through um nutrition movement um the uh life purpose with human design hypnotherapy looking at that the mind really looking at that and shifting our mindset doing mindfulness work um you know i always it's funny because a lot of times uh the guides will give me a mantra for them or an affirmation to take forward with them um and also yeah in meditation and then um and then the spirit really getting that connection in um and working with that inner with the energy work yeah uh, so yeah it's 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 pretty incredible and you know when you come out on that other side it, it you, you are ready for that next piece you know so it's just yeah i love it i love being able to take um people through that and um and really guiding and supporting them on their journey yeah yeah wonderful and so over three months how many you know interactions would someone have you is it like on a weekly or fortnightly basis that you'd be having a session with them yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like every uh week to two weeks just depending on what we're doing because yeah within that we got to integrate we need mm. to integrate the information and so um and uh like with energy healings and as you know yeah once a month is about as much as you can do energy work on a body because you have to allow the body to calibrate and integrate um so yeah so we meet either weekly uh, for some things or we might meet every two weeks yep um, and then yeah but if something comes up and it's like oh wow that human design session really kind of clicked me i think it's time 
to do a hypnotherapy release or a sacral session, which is a human design technique for generator types, where we really connect into the sacral yes and no, you know, mm -hmm. in that decision making. So we will uh, do that. So it really is, yeah, it, it, it's kind of works very flow because not everybody's going to, you know, not everybody has the same timing, you know. Mm -hmm. And so we really kind of just flow with uh, the person, I, you know, as, as, as they're needing it. But yeah, I do. I put the package together and we talk through it and um, see how things come up and, you know, check in. There's yeah, always right. check-ins. Uh -huh. Where are you? You know, how are you feeling? All of those types of things that can help um, bring it back bring your bring them back to the present and going okay yeah okay what is my emotional check-in right now mm -hmm. so where where's my mind where are my thoughts you know so mm -hmm. yeah and you do work remotely with people yes yeah. yes yeah it works as as we know energy energy goes across the the uh you know <laughs> it, it about, uh, yeah across the universe you know uh, there's no time and space uh, once you get in there so um it's yeah it works really well and I, I actually really enjoy doing remote energy work because the body's not there so it's much easier to connect in yeah yeah Have I know, you noticed I that too yeah absolutely yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I always make sure though before I do an energy healing on somebody that I connect via zoom. I mean, we're going to yes. talk anyway, Fine. because I want to connect into the energy and, uh, then yeah. Yeah. But it is interesting when the body's out of the way, you can, um, really, yeah. uh, shift some great things. So. Yeah. I think, yeah, you can connect to those, the, to the higher vibrations more, much yes. more easily, can't you? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 it's very cool. And yeah, um, just wanted to comment on you saying yeah, the energy healing once a month. I do, yeah, I find that people um, will generally say that they, and I'd love to do a study on this at some point, but they'll say they kind of feel the results, the benefits of the energy healing for around three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, it's just been amazing how many people have said that to me over the time I've been doing this work. So three weeks seems to be for some reason, the period mm -hmm. of time that, you know, you're kind of assimilating the energy work, but yeah. so therefore then people will often, you know, do it as a monthly self-care thing. Uh -huh. But I do also find that for some people, especially initially, they mm -hmm. will benefit from coming every two weeks for maybe mm -hmm. three sessions to mm -hmm. really, um, you know, kind of shake things up in a way and mm -hmm. really get the energy moving so that they can release mm -hmm. what they need to release and then be ready to assimilate uh -huh. what they need to assimilate. So, right. yeah, I just wanted to make that comment from my point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in between for me, it, we're doing like the hypnotherapy work. So we're releasing thought forms and stuff like that. And uh, so, yeah, it's it, every system works um, differently. And I always tell people too, and I'm sure you feel it too, is, you know, um, when you've had a, an energy session, sometimes the next day, you're not going to feel that great. No, exactly. Yeah. You know, I remember coming out and I'm like, you know, the next day going, why don't I feel better? And it's like, yep. oh, wait a second, energy got shifted. So those open spots, even though good energy has been put in there, have to integrate and yep. assimilate. So yeah, yeah. Totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, I love that. So before we finish up, I'd love you to just tell people about your podcast as well, because I have had the privilege of being a guest on yours, the Integra yes. podcast. Um, and so I guess it's just, you know, what what kinds of guests um, do you have other than me? <laughs> um, yeah. You know, just so that for people who are interested in having a listening, having a listen should mm -hmm. check it out. Yeah, so it is the Integra podcast, and the tagline for it is everything wisdom, wellness, and woo. Love so that. I, it's, yeah, it's so fun. So I get to talk to everybody, <laughs> you know, it really, you know, you got a little wisdom, you got some, you know, do you do wellness or are you into woo? Um, 
but uh, you know, I've interviewed amazing people. I really love um, to sh share people's stories of inspiration and how something that may have been challenging for them became their life purpose. And, um, you know, my first interview was with Natasha Ria Elskari. She is a poet. Um, and, but in the Kansas City area, area, she is huge in the um, Black community and has really lifted up um, the Black artists in our community and um, but she's also an author and a poet. And so we talked about her book um, about consciousness and dating. And it was, oh. lovely. It, she wrote, basically wrote a book for her son on, you know, how to be, you know, spiritually, mindfully um, conscious of when you date and oh, in relationships. So, so it was really cool. Um, and then, you know, then I had on um, someone who does kitchen therapy, you know, who uh, overcame colon cancer. And um, now she teaches people how to take care of themselves and empower themselves and see um, the work that we do in the kitchen as self-care oh. and yeah. And, you know, then I have somebody on, he is, uh, he has, he has his own podcast called confessions of Christian kid and talking about his unwinding from a pretty conservative religion and how really reading the red letters of the Bible gave him um, you know, a real understanding of really who Jesus, um, was, is, and is as a ascended master and, uh, you know, huge part of, uh, that realm. And so it's just been this lovely group. And then I had this woman on who was a medical astrologer <laughs> as well as, um, does the even star well-being program, you know? So it was, it's, it's lovely. I'm so excited. I love being able to talk with people like you, um, and really, um, put it out there for people because, you know, when we're stuck, we need inspiration and, I want people to have access to the person they resonate with. Yes. Yep. And, um, and so that's, what's important to me. Um, yeah. And I just, uh, I just interviewed somebody who wrote a book on um, unbullying and uh, how to, how to speak to bullies and how to speak to your the bully in yourself. And it was pretty incredible. So I just, yeah, I really try and have like this, weave this group, you know, this beautiful narrative for people to find what they need and um, who, who they can reach out to. So yeah, no, sounds fascinating. Fun. Yeah. That, I yeah. look forward to the unbullying episode that, that will yes. be yeah, really interesting. How cool. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, and your podcast is available on all the podcasting platforms. Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, I believe. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. And then how else can people um, best get in touch with you if they're wanting to connect with you around your work? Okay. Yeah. So I have a website. It's Integra Holistic mm -hmm. And I'm on Facebook at Integra Holistic Wellness. And Instagram is Integra Holistic Wellness as well, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually, you know how, you know how when you get like a common name, they kind of switch like my old uh, business name. I had something that you know, I had to add some letters or something onto the end of it. And I'm like, oh, I actually did get them all uh, to work. So yeah, Integra Holistic Wellness, mm -hmm. either .com and or on Instagram is Integra Holistic Wellness and also on Facebook. And so, yeah, you can reach out that way um, through DMs. And also I have scheduling on um, the website as well. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time, Heather. It's been a really great conversation and it's fascinating the work you do. So um, I'm so pleased to be able to bring, bring that to some more people. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on here. It was, in, you know, I always love talking with you. <laughs> well, good. All right. Thanks, Heather.